Okay, here we are, Grandpa. Happy yeah. Happy Father's Day. Happy June Father's 11, Day. 2023. I feel like I'm being interrogated. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one is pretty random. Yeah, speak but loud. So what? If this question is pretty random. Oh, but, that's good. Um, <laughs> if you could have dinner with a famous person or spend the day with a famous person, alive or dead, <laughs> <laughs> who would it be and why? Famous person? Uh-huh. Who did you like really admire that was famous that you would want to meet, hang out with all day, have dinner with them? <clears throat> Who like alive or dead? Is there anybody that No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. Um do we ask another one? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um how did you meet Dad's mom, our grandmother? How did you meet her? She went to the same high school that I did. Um, she was one grade ahead of me. Oh, an older lady. Mm -hmm. I go for older women. <laughs> <laughs> um, how did... Y'all did y'all know what like Uncle Keith and Kathy... My dad was, did you know the gender of the baby before they were born? No. No. How did you, where did all the K names come from? The what? The K names, Keith, Kathy, and Carrie, where did those come from? Uh, it was just uh, kind of a thing at the time, people named their children mm. with the same letter. letter. Okay. A trend. A trend. And we liked the name Keith, particularly, mm -hmm. and then we just followed up with the K's after that. Yeah, cool. Um, did you have any nicknames as a kid? Me? Yeah. As a child, no. No. Well, Davy. Davy. I never did like that. <laughs> 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 um. What kind of jobs did you have in your life? So like, what was your first job? And then, because I know you were a contractor. My first job was when I was about in the fifth grade or sixth grade, picking potatoes at harvest time. Oh, yes. So I didn't get to go to school like the other kids in September. I didn't go until November. Oh. But I usually did all the homework that were, I never got behind. You're too smart. And then I, I had um, I worked my way through high school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> my first real job was um, my first summer job was a carpenter's helper. I made five dollars a day. Wow! So that was a pretty good job. Nice. Next, next summer I was about. 17, I think, I got a job as a farm laborer. I made $48 a week, which was a high dollar. Wow, yeah. Mm. Rolling. That, that was like 10 hours a day, seven days a week. I mean, six days a week. Mm, wow. No, we quit early on Saturday, one hour early on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool, cool. And then, um, what, was, what were your jobs after that? Oh, well, when I was 19, I went and spent, me and my three buddies went to California, spent the winter in California, I worked in a furniture factory there for a few months, then we came back home and I got a job in construction. Uh, we were building, building houses and buildings like that. And that's, I've been doing that ever since. Well, except for the last few years, I was doing strictly maintenance. Yeah. Gotcha, I gotcha, I um, gotcha. I don't know if I'm right um, What sports did you play growing up? Sports? Yeah. Or did you play music? Uh, I played basketball for a while, uh, but... Obviously, I wasn't going to make the A-team, so I dropped out. 
Mm. <laughs> I was a star of the B team, however. Mm. <laughs> <coughs> so funny. I was pretty agile at my height. I, I could touch the rim. Hmm. But that didn't uh, that didn't get me anywhere. <laughs> so pretty much just basketball for sports. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um Okay, Grandpa, what was your favorite childhood memory? Favorite childhood memory? Yeah. Do you have one? Oh, Pat, I can't say. We can come <clears throat> back to it if you want. I guess uh, uh, childhood memory probably was the best when, at Christmas time. Is there a certain Christmas? Or just Christmas no, in general? No, just Christmas because you've got some gifts. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer, Grandpa. <laughs> okay, next question. How did you propose to your wife? How did I propose to her? Mm -hmm. I recall that. Uh, we were sitting in the car, parked in the car, and I had uh, I think I asked her to put a cigarette in my mouth, and as she reached out, I slipped the, the ring on her finger. Ooh, Grandpa, you slap on! She slipped it on. And she got pretty excited. Oh, I bet she did. That's so cute. Did you end up getting the cigarette? Pardon? Did did you end up getting the cigarette? I, I don't know what happened to the cigarette after that. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you love most about her? Oh, I don't know, just everything in general. Everything about her? She was uh, never never argumentative or anything like that. Uh, okay. Calm, cool. Collected. Nice. That's cute. <laughs> okay, so when did you move to Houston? When and why? Oh. Nineteen fifty six. Okay. That's a long time ago. The reason being, uh, no opportunity for young people in the in that area of the country yeah. because uh, North Dakota a lot of the young people moved out if your parents didn't have a business or a farm you were pretty much uh, uh, you're going to be a labor all your life okay so I just uh, packed up my, uh, I think Keith was six months old, five or six months old, and my wife was pregnant. We put all her stuff in her car and drove to Houston. Wow. I had an uncle that was here. Okay. That's where all the cool people come. Good choice. <laughs> Good choice, Grandpa. <laughs> okay. Um, and then what was your first car? My first car? Yeah. A 1950 Chevrolet two-door. Oh. Uh, I probably didn't get that till I was, uh, I didn't get my first car till I was 19, I don't think. Okay. What color was it? Black. Okay. It'd be cool if you still had it. But it was, uh. Three or four years old, then I guess. Okay. Cool. Well, that's my turn. All right, Grandpa. <clears throat> uh, my first question is Did you have indoor plumbing whenever you lived in South Dakota? North Dakota. I know. Oh, <laughs> sorry. No. You didn't? No. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Oh. Didn't have electricity either. Oh, okay, that was one of my. <laughs> um, 
how did you get to school and how far was it to school? In grade school? Yeah. It was a little over a mile. Okay. To a one room country schoolhouse. One room, okay. Uh, a lot of the times we walked, me and my sister, but we had neighbors that lived farther out that used to st stop and pick us up most of the time. Mm -hmm. Usually we walked home. Usually, okay. But we had rides in the morning most of the time. Okay. And then, so like what were your daily chores to be like growing up? Well, I don't think I really had any in grade school until uh, I got into high school. You know, I had I had projects of uh, like raising a litter of hogs, and I got a calf and a calf scramble one time. I had to raise it one summer, mm -hmm. so those were my chores. Okay, okay, a little different than nowadays, huh? Other than that, when I was little, I used to polish everybody's shoes in the house every Saturday. Oh, okay. <laughs> Help mother iron clothes. Uh, um, do you remember your phone number as a kid? Didn't have a phone. Didn't have one? Uh, or like, do you remember your first phone number? Uh, no, no, I don't. No, okay. Um, do you remember when you got your first TV? Uh, yeah, because the first winter I was married, I worked in a uh, part time at a um, TV shop installing TVs. Mm -hmm. So I got a good deal on a TV and. Uh, it was, uh, I guess, 1955. 1955? It was a real little 17-inch Motorola. We were on the fringe bennett. Very few people had TVs then. I was one of the, you had to go down to the, people went to the bar to watch TV. Mm, yeah. <laughs> they had a, And then my last question was, or is, did you ever get a whooping as a kid? No. Never? You were goody two-shoes? <laughs> My dad slapped me one time. Uh, I don't think he wanted to, but I was playing with the stove. We had opened uh, kitchen ranges with fire in them. Right, right. And I had opened up the lid and stuck a piece of paper in and I was holding it like that. He came over and slapped me and <laughs> <laughs> I dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike my sister, she used to get uh, spankings pretty often, but I never did. Oh, well, my mother used to. Uh, she would, I, I wouldn't call it a whipping, but she'd uh, hit me in the shoulder with her fist all the time. Oh, yeah. Until I finally, one time I grabbed her fist and I held it like this, and she just started laughing, and that was the last time she ever did it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, Grandpa, so some of these questions some of the kids have already asked, but I'm gonna expand on them a little bit. So the first question is, where were you born and how were the living conditions growing up? I was born in Grafton, North Dakota. Mm -hmm. Which is what, 50 miles from the Canadian border? About Roughly. that. Okay. And the living conditions growing up? Goes. Well, we were uh, uh, living in a state of poverty. Yeah, there was no uh, <laughs> no indoor plumbing and electricity, or oh no, no, <clears throat> no phones. I think uh, uh, I think my parents got electricity when I I was living in. I moved into or really into town to go to high school during the winter. And uh, I think they got electricity then. But when I was in grade school, I never had any. Okay. So as far as high school goes, I know, I think it was Nikki or somebody asked you about high school, but 
how many in your graduating class, how many students were there? And then I think you said it was a one room schoolhouse. So that, that what, was what, in the grade school. Right, okay, so as far, okay, so the high school was, so, okay, let me back up. So as far as grade school goes, what, was it a one school room house? from like kindergarten to like eighth grade? No or? kindergarten at the time. Okay, so it was like first through eighth? One through eight, yeah. And that was everybody in the same classroom? Yeah, one room, one okay. room country schoolhouse. Okay, um, so I mean, what was one teacher that or One was teacher like, taught all eight grades, and all the students. There were only about 12 to 15 students in the whole school, in all eight grades. Wow. I was in the biggest class, there were three of us. <laughs> yeah, that was that person pretty busy and then as far as high school goes do, do you remember how many were in your graduating class there was 55 seniors oh. we were, our, our high school was fairly large for the size of the town it was in because they specialized in teaching uh, agriculture and home ec <clears throat> because we were a farming community and all the schools in the area didn't do that specialized in agriculture and home ec so we had more students. The town was only like between 2,500 and 3,000 population, but the school had <coughs> probably between 250 and 300 students. And that was in Park River? Uh-huh. Okay, yeah. And so Park River, Park River was like 20 minutes from Grafton, right? If yeah. If I remember correctly? Okay. 17 miles. Okay. Um, all right, so the next question, I know one, one of the kids asked, I can't forget your answer, but <clears throat> how did you meet mom and tell us about the kind of person she was? <clears throat> Expand on that a little bit. So w did, did somebody introduce you to mom or did you? <clears throat> well, she was a friend of my sister, which my sister is a year older, so they were in the same class together. And she actually come and occasionally we would we still like I said we we lived in in Park River in the winter time because, uh, you could could travel uh, back and forth to school in the country because we never knew where it was going to be snowed in or something like that but occasionally mother and dad would bring us home for the weekend and sometimes they would bring uh sometimes gladys would come home with marlene so i got to know her better than i would other otherwise okay and then you said y'all y'all moved or i or you know what what year was it when, when your mom got married when we got married yeah you remember what, what year it was? Because I think, I think you said it was 1956 when you moved to Houston? 1955 we got married. Okay. And it was 56 when, when you moved to Houston? Was that, or I can't remember what you said. <clears throat> uh, it doesn't seem to compute too well. Uh, Fifty-five, but then y'all. So when when y'all moved down here, did did, did y'all move? moved here in fifty-six because that's when okay. Kathy was born. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because what what year was it when we moved in with Uncle Joe? Well, that's when we first came down here. We okay. stayed with him for a few weeks till we okay. got a little apartment. Okay. So that's fifty-six. So then. Uh, my next question is, is tell us about how when mom was diagnosed with cancer, what kind of cancer it was and how it was discovered and what was the technology surrounding, you know, cancer research at that time? <clears throat> she was at work and apparently uh, she passed out in the, in the restroom. She uh, had a large tumor that hemorrhaged. Mm -hmm. And uh, they took her to the hospital. And was it like her stomach? Or yeah. Not? Okay. And it was, uh, uh, 
uh, kind of a, uh, it was a very rare, so they didn't know much about it. Yeah. Well, I mean, up to that point, has she been feeling bad or anything? Or know, just you know, no symptoms or anything? <clears throat> she had some of those. Um, I, I don't, women have these fibroid tumors mm -hmm. that are non malignant. <clears throat> a lot of them have them. She may have thought that that's she, what she had, but it was apparently uh, the surgeon that did the emergency work on her said it was a cantaloupe sized tumor. And uh, so she uh, she had several uh, operations uh, in the next. Very, it went kind of remission there for like three years, but then then she it came back and she went to MD Anderson and she had uh, radiation and uh, uh, never did have a chemo. I don't think, but the radiation she had. And, uh, and then that burnt part of her colon, so they had to operate there and fix that. And eventually, at uh, the last time she was in the hospital, they just gave her like six to eight weeks to live, and that was it. Yeah. And that was pretty much true because I think it was like seven weeks. Yeah, so many weeks. And it was the the name for it was leomyosarcoma. Her mother had died from that same thing. And when her mother died, a few years prior to this, there were, she lived in Seattle, it was the, the relatives up there said that, that the doctors had said there was only like 50, 15 cases in the United States of that particular uh, type of cancer. So it was very rare, so they didn't, they didn't know much about it. I looked it up uh, in the, within the last year or so, and I think uh, the real <coughs> is uh, uh, only six six women out of a million that have uh, cancer in their uh, female organs have that particular kind, so it's a very rare. Okay, so my last question is, how do you want people to remember you once you're gone? <laughs> That's a hard one. Well, I've always pride, took pride in, in my honesty. Uh, I can honestly say I don't think I've ever stole a pencil in my life. Even though I was when I was young and didn't have any, I would have mm -hmm. loved to have one, a real, a real full length pencil. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. So, so my last question is, and this is just ad libbing, is there any reason why you never got remarried? That gets to be quite complicated. Uh, not that I didn't have people that wanted to get married. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you, at the time, you you ponder about whether the, whether your new mate would get along with your children or not. And my children were the most important part of my life at that time. Although I don't, uh, they may have felt like I neglected them at the time, and I probably did in certain ways. But I, what I did, I didn't mean to. Uh, but it, it, it was, it was hard to decide whether I should get married or not. And, uh, I, Kathy kind of took over. She grew up real fast, so. Uh, she actually raised you pretty much. Uh, I, I didn't feel a need for to be married. I don't guess. Okay. It didn't take me long before I had girlfriends, though. But. Okay.
That's it. You should do some bloopers. I know. <laughs> we didn't have any bloopers. <laughs> like we should do. So are you recording? It's okay. We can always come back. So Grandpa, you said that if you could spend one day with a celebrity, you have your answer now? Oh, I, I never really give that any thought. You there said Marilyn Monroe much, earlier. I mean, pretty much out of the question. It was not a realistic thing, so I never even thought about something like that. Well, did you have a crush on a celebrity back then? No. I always thought, oh, Jude Allison was kind of cute. Jude <laughs> you probably never oh, heard Jim. of her. No, never, never heard of her. What was your favorite song? Like just a song that you love to hear over and over and over. Oh, I used to like uh, some of the some of the country western songs that uh, uh, I can't think of the names. Elvis and I were the same age. Elvis? See, Elvis? Is that Elvis? Elvis. Elvis Presley and I were the same age. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all would have been great friends. <laughs> Elvis. 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 I did used to sing when I was uh, uh, in high school. Did you? So well, you, you, you were in choir? Maybe. Yeah, in a choir, and not the choir, the chorus. But I sang at some weddings for friends. Oh, cool. Wow. Would you like to sing for us today? <laughs> uh, my throat is not so good to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was probably one of the reasons I left Norwich Good. There was no opportunities for, for nothing, nobody. Mm -hmm. uh, and by the time I came down here, I was so, uh, uh, pretty much like, uh, pretty much like your immigrants come here today. Mm -hmm. uh, but did you know anybody here? With or, or nothing. Or did you just? With nothing and you just work day to day for enough to eat. That's about all. Yeah. I mean, what, was there anybody that you knew here? I mean, that. Well, Uncle Joe you, was here. Okay, that's all I wanted. Yeah. <clears throat> But you didn't, uh, uh, you couldn't afford to take a day off to find another job, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think and and being, being that young is not very advantageous when you get married young and have, I, I had two children by the time I was 22 years old. Oh, okay. Wait, how old were you when Uncle Keith was born? 21, I think. Mm, okay. So, like, yeah, because you said that. But Kathy was born uh, 14 months later, right? Or something like that. Keith was only, uh, what was he? Eight months old when Kathy was born? Mm. Oh, mm. man. <laughs> Well, they're the same age right now until June 15th. From April 10th until June 15th, wow. they're both the same age. That is crazy. so crazy. She was born premature, that's why. Mm, okay. That's what sent me back so bad when, when we first came here. We weren't here but uh, three or four weeks. And, uh, you know, she was pregnant. and. She didn't have any doctor or anything yet. So that one day, we, we, you know, she felt good and everything. So we uh, come to the point where she needed to go see a obstetrician, you know, to, because we're gonna have we're gonna have a doctor. Yeah. Well, she went that day. That night she got labor pains. Oh wow! Mm. Good timing. So how many months early was uh, Kathy? 
I think it was less than seven weeks, seven months. Okay. okay. Six weeks, I mean six months and three weeks, something like that, I think. Okay. Uh, she was six pounds, three ounces. That's a pretty good Still size pretty healthy for yeah. her. Yeah. Uh, she dropped down to two pounds, 11 ounces. She was in the incubator okay. six weeks. And, you know, country boy in a big city, when she got late face like that, we didn't even know where the hospital was. Oh, no. I know I finally mm -hmm. found that we were supposed to schedule uh, the doctor took the patients to St. Joseph's. That's when so many of the children at that, in that era were born at St. Joseph's Hospital downtown. Hmm. But uh, I got her there and went in, we couldn't, there was one way street, so <laughs> they had to go around to the emergency room, they came and got her in a wheelchair, and I parked the car and went, went inside to register, and they told me I had a baby girl. Oh, <laughs> close. <laughs> close. Super fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty close. She pushed that sucker up. And they wanted their, they wanted money right away. They took every penny I had. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I came down here. I died like twelve hundred dollars. I thought I was rich. That's crazy. But that, then you end up totally broke. Mm -hmm. Wait. So how far, Dad? How far apart are you and Aunt Kathy? I forgot. Well, I think it was nine years, isn't it? What? When me and Aunt Kathy were... How far eight, apart? Eight, eight, first, I think it might be eight, eight, years. eight years, maybe. They were about eight years apart. Because mm. I had to save up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Where were your parents from, Grandpa? Park? Where were your parents from? from? Because mm -hmm. they weren't from the U.S., right? Or oh, were it, no, they were born here in the United uh, States. Oh, they so. were? Okay. Yeah, there's a, uh, they all, their parents migrated from, I think the Soaplicks <clears throat> settled in, uh, in Iowa, and then eventually they, <clears throat> They migrated to North Dakota and Montana. They have Bohemian settlements, mm. uh, you know, in villages where it's mostly Czech people in, the, in, the, in that area. And then you go five, six miles over there away and it's all Norwegians or Swedes or that's just the way they settled in that farm, farm farming area there. I think that's when they settled. That was back when the government was giving like 160 acres. Uh, if you <coughs> lived on it and, and worked it, they gave it to you or some some of those. That's how they accumulated that land. But now, Grandma, so Grandma had like a big family, though, right? Didn't she have like 12 or 13 brothers yeah, or something like that? Yeah, I think she. Had, I think there were 12 of them. I think there were 12 in the family, and, and they raised two cousins that or something after their parents. I don't know what. And so that, that's where Uncle Joe was Grandma's brother. Mm -hmm. So he was down here, and then his grandpa moved down here. And I knew I never met my dad's uh, mother and dad. Uh, they, I, I, I don't know what happened to them. They must have died young. I know. Uh, Dad was the youngest in the family. He uh, he dropped out of fifth grade or fourth grade, so he wasn't educated. But uh, my mother, she she got through eight grades, I think. But my dad was uh, very mechanically inclined <coughs> for not having an education. He could take a motor out of a car and take it out of the kitchen and take it all apart and 
uh, put the new rings in and valves and, and all this stuff, put it all together and, uh, with nothing but a pair of pliers and a screwdriver, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Crack it up and away we go. <laughs> so, Grandpa, did you ever know any other languages or just English? Uh, mother and Dad spoke Czech all the time. Oh, they did? So I understood all that. Okay. But I never, I never spoke it. And uh, I'm pretty rusty now, but people that speak it here in the South have a, have a certain southern dialect that goes to it, so it's a little harder to understand mm -hmm. too. And over the years you forget it yeah. pretty much. But I, I never did speak it, but I understood everything. Okay, that's cool. So it was your parents, parents who came from Czech, yeah, Czechoslovakia? Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia. And they came to Iowa for? Yeah, well, I, you know, that's when immigration was uh, building the country. They, most of them landed in Ellis Island, New York, and, and got distributed from there. A lot of the people went to parts of the United States that had similar climate conditions as to the, similar to the ones that they had when they were in Europe. So that's why you have your people from Spain. They didn't settle in the northern part of the country mm -hmm. because it's warmer in Spain than people from uh, Central Europe, Germany, and Poland. And they all uh, moved into more of the northern part of the country because that's comparable to what they have in Europe with the temperature. I think Ukraine is a lot like uh, north, like northern part of our country. Uh, we, uh, where I was born, we raised a lot of wheat and potatoes is a big crop for us. Uh, we uh, lived in the eastern part of North Dakota, which is. Uh, uh, got the Red River Valley, which is some of the most fertile soil in the world. Uh, incidentally, the Red River of the North fl flows north. This is the only river in the United States that flows north. It empties into Lake Winnipeg, where all the other rivers flow south. Hmm. That was interesting. I think I remember what was, wasn't John Henke like your, one of your best friends growing up, and then he started. He was farming potatoes like quite a bit. And yeah. Then, yeah. And then he was like, uh, I think he was like Frito Lay's biggest supplier. Really? Yeah. For like potato chips or That's something. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Grandpa wanted to know. Cause we, it, wait, so do we have any family that still lives in Czech? Like you what? Czech was, I thought there's like Czech Republic now and Slovakia, yeah. right? Yeah. Do we still have family that lives over there? Any family oh, in Czech? Uh, Czech probably, probably some uh, distant ancestors, I suppose. Nobody that you know? But there's the Soblik name is, we had a, a Soblik reunion in uh, Park River. Oh, I don't know. A long time ago. Between 20, 30 years ago? Probably more 30 years ago. I mean, it's probably, probably more like 40, probably. Descendants of uh, what is it, Joe and Mary Soblik, which uh, I don't know how old they were, but anyway, there were like uh, 640 some people at this reunion. Oh, wow. They That's were all cool. descendants of, the, of this one. Yeah, because I think I remember reading in the paper, the, the local paper, where it said, like, uh, Sobolik in Czech means like mountain goat, right? Yeah. Uh, something like that. But what? Doesn't it mean mountain goat? The, you know oh, what Sobolik means in Czech? I don't know. I hadn't heard that. <laughs> Dad, you told us that as kids. Yeah, it's huh? also, you, you can Google it too. It yeah. also says that on Google. But I, I thought you said it was a joke. It's no. real? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you told me it was mm. a joke. No. Okay. Grandpa, 
how did you find Uncle Joe if there were no phones and... Oh, how did you well, find him down here? he had just uh, moved down here with... Uh, he just got married and moved down here to get away from up there because a lot of people didn't like the woman, woman he married, so oh, no. they moved here. <laughs> We had, when I first went to work in the construction, he worked for the same guy, so we worked together. Oh, okay. Uh, and I, you know, he was my uncle. I knew him and uh, his brothers. I used to spend a lot of time at my, my grandmother's house on my mother's side. Uh, that's who he was, so. Uh, it was, I was, uh, I don't know, I was pretty five, five, six years old or something when uh, World War II broke out in 1942, uh, six, seven, seven years old, I guess. It's four, Joe and three of his brothers went to war. So there were four of them. Uh, that's the Did they all come back? Yeah. Good. Joe actually was one of the first to go. I think the war broke out in December 7th or something in the 11th or 12th. He was on the train going. Dang. Uh, so he was in the uh, initial uh, war zones like in New Guinea. But did he have any formal combat training, or, or was he just a, like a civilian? And they no, no, no. They, they had basic training, and then they ship him off. Oh, okay. Uh, so he he got wounded in New Guinea. Uh, went recuperated in New Zealand. Then he got in on the invasion of Okinawa. Wow. So. Uh, he had a lot of bad war memories in the yeah, Pacific Islands. Yeah. That's crazy. And uh, one of his brothers, they all went to different places. One of his brothers was in the Europe, European theater there in Italy, fighting the Germans. And the other brother was in India working on the Burma Road they were building at the time. Oh. He was susceptible to Japanese snipers all the time. <laughs> <laughs> they'd, they'd come home from the, when the war was over, they'd come home and on Sunday afternoons they'd sit in the big, like we were sitting here in the big parlor instead of, uh, they called it the parlor. They call them den here now, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd tell their war stories. Some of them, Joe never did talk about his, however. Uh, I think he probably killed several people in the war. And I don't know that some people don't like to talk about that. And the fourth brother, he was, he never left the United States. He was a cook. He was the smartest one of the bunch, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool.